What's up, gang? Welcome to an exciting episode where we find ourselves in the heart of Dorset. Uh, we are at Charborough Estates, and I'm currently stood halfway up an archway, which is a part of the longest or one of the longest walls in England, which the whole wall consists of two million bricks. That is a lot of bricks. But we have the honor and the pleasure of going upstairs and working on this amazing life-size stag. And we have the privilege of molding it and casting it into bronze. So if you want to watch this whole process and keep up with date with what we're doing, then stay tuned, like and subscribe, and coming along for the journey. Hi! What's up, gang? So, me and Lucas have scaled, and Jordan, have scaled to the top of this archway at Charbor Estate, and we are starting on this life-size stag, and this thing is monstrous. Just give you a little sense of scale. I mean, I'm not the tallest person in the world, but this thing is monstrous. We had to, first off, start prepping the surface of the stag because the whole reason why we're doing this ladies and gents is because it's been up here for decades and over the time it just started falling to bits the antler came away and they were worried that it's gonna just crumble and go into the road and cause traffic accidents and things like that so what they want is a replica and we are going to be casting this into bronze which we're super excited about so the first stages was to prep the surface. So we filled all the cracks in with clay, got all the surface ready, and then we are, or well, we just have put the rubber on, the first layer, the flow coat, and we've already gone through over half a tub of rubber. It's mental, this thing's gonna eat material, but we're super excited to get cracking, and uh, yeah, here it is. the game now is to figure out where we are going to be putting our seam lines um, because something of this scale any scale in fact you need to really do your prep work you need to figure out where your seam lines are going to be because once you put those seam lines in they cannot be moved and once you put your fiberglass jacket on or your jesmonite jacket on you want to create it so there's no locks what do I mean by a lock? A lock is basically an area where, where you can put a hard material and it cannot be removed. It's almost locked in. So you want to create your seams so when you actually remove the mould from the pattern, it comes away easily um, and it bolts together easily. And so me and Lucas are going to go around now with some playing cards to create our shims, our dividing lines, because each panel 
we're going to try and design this stag or this mould where each panel is going to be either one or two panels of bronze when cast. So if ever we have a blowout in the ceramic shell, we can locate which section it is, recast the wax without having to do the whole thing and trying to figure it all out. So uh, what we're going to do now is just crack on with the shim. So gang, what we've been doing for the last 20 minutes uh, is we've just been dividing where we think that the mould needs to be divided. Um, and so we're just going around with these playing cards. You can get Plastishim, uh, but they, and they have like little vacuum bubbles on them and you get three different sizes and they act as really good locators. But if you are uh, on a budget, playing cards are really, really great uh, pieces of equipment just to do this job. And because of their size, you can literally bead your silicon. This silicon here is just your general purpose silicon. You get loads of different silicons, but this one's the one that actually doesn't tear or rip into the, to the cards. Um, I would only really advise getting this sort of brand, Everbuild general purpose silicon. And it's really good way of attaching your shims because this silicon adheres to the, uh, the green stuff and it's like piping icing onto a cake you need to make yourself like a decent bed otherwise the cards don't stand a chance they don't stand well so you need to just make yourself a bead and then the cards just sit in there nicely mm, maybe not <laughs> and then you just Plop them in. Plop, such a great word. And you see how they're just quite rigid. And this, because of the size of them, they stand on their own. And that, and then you smooth off the silicon. Let's get around the other side. Rushka, rushka. And then I'll just smooth this off here. Lovely. Packer. And then what I'll do for extra strength is I will just go in between each one and I'll just put a little bit of silicon and it just glues them all together. And that, ladies and gents, is how you apply your shims. Thank you for watching this week's episode. This is such an exciting project and I'm so glad you guys are following along. Me and Lucas are gonna carry on shimming and dividing this deer, but make sure to tune in next time where we'll be applying all of the rubber, getting all those layers on and making sure that it's nice and strong. So until that time, guys, we'll see you there. See you later.